Hey, hey, how y'all doing this evening? Welcome to another evening of a Nightline, and I'm here to tell you that it is going to be special in the house tonight. I'm talking about we got great music, we got great songs, we have an even greater interview from a gentleman uh, by the name of Al Harris. Al Harris has a great story, great testimony. He's a young up-and-coming rap artist in the Christian rap business, and it's not something that he does just to be doing it. He does it because he feels like it's his testimony to be able to reach this next generation with what they're being reached with against God. So he comes to them with what God has done for him in his life, and it's going to be a special evening. We also have uh, Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers from Charlotte, North Carolina, which is going to be awesome to hear them speaking this evening. And, and uh, I love the name of, uh, of, of the group, uh, the Leviticus Singers. Our verse of scripture tonight actually comes from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 8. And it reads, At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi, to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister to him, and to bless in his name unto this day. This is, to me, probably one of the, the best jobs that you can have for the Lord, to be able to minister to him. Uh, what, what I remember of reading is that whenever Israel would go to war, the Ark of the Covenant would be out before them, so basically, the, the praisers and the worshipers and the Ark of the Covenant would come out before the men of war. Isn't that awesome? How if you want to get into a place where you have a battle in your life, or if you have something that's coming against you, if you want to fight, 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 if you're going to start your fighting, start your fighting off praising God. Start your fighting off coming to him in his name, lifting up your voices and saying, thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Uh, like I said, we're going to have a great show tonight. Uh, if you want to call in, we got people on the prayer lines. Uh, the number is, uh, uh, what's the number again? 864-244-1616. I knew it, I knew it. 864-244-1616. Or you can go online to nightline.com, uh, wggs16.com. And we are ready to hear from you. People are ready to pray with you. People are ready to talk to you about what's going on in your life. Now, right now, let's turn it over to the music portion. Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers of Charlotte singing, You Are Good.
Steve Dalton and the Leviticus singers of Charlotte, you are good. You can, you can look around uh, anywhere. Uh, creation speaks of how good he is. I mean, that's a broad, broad, broad view. It's, you can look at the sky. You can look at the rivers and the oceans and the mountains. And you can see just how good God really is. But I know him to be good personally. He has been so good to me. He has done things for me that I could not do for myself. He has delivered. He has healed. He has taken care of. I can, I can look back over my shoulder in the past, and I can't see one time where God let me down. He is good. And uh, I am so glad to have a friend of mine this evening. His name is Al Harris, and Al has a wonderful story. He has a great mission that he is... A, that he is embarking on. So, Al, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Man, listen, I'm doing lovely. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm wonderful. That's good. That's Absolutely. good, man. That's Absolutely. good, man. man so, it's, it's good to be here. Again. It is good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> feel like home. Feel so like let me home. tell you, how good is God? Man, God is great. God yeah. is magnificent. And as many times we think we're not worthy mm -hmm. of the love of God. That's just how good he is. When you speak of unconditional, you think about God, you know? You don't think about human standards. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't think about a conditional love or uh, a love that, that, that's, that's measured by your rights and your wrongs, but you think of an unconditional God and mm -hmm. unconditional love. Yeah, a guy who loves you in spite of you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because I know I can, be, I can be unlovable sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, you, you Absolutely. don't believe it? That's my <laughs> wife every now and then. You know, <laughs> I can be unlovable sometimes, but the God that loves me, he loves me through that, regardless of me, because I know that if it were not for him, mm. There is no telling where I would be. Absolutely. You know, and I know you got a you got a similar testimony to mine, man. Uh, I mean, everybody has a has a uh, different way God did things for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really want to just get into it because we got we ain't got but an hour, you know. And we could talk about That's Jesus. All. That's all. We ain't got That's but it. an hour, but we could talk about this <laughs> all night long. I know it because we've talked before. Yes. So tell tell us about your testimony. Well, um, where do I start, man? I, where do I start? Uh, as a child, I was active. You know, I was always active, and um, I can remember me being young, me being small, man. Uh, my first memory, um, being in the kitchen, is my mother, she'll be cooking breakfast and, and things like that, and, 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 and I would be just ripping and running around the place. And I was about three or four years old, but I can could, I could, I could vaguely remember. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, got to the age of five, man, uh, I do remember my mother my mother sending me to my grandmother, you know. Um, my father wasn't there, you know. I, I don't recall him being there, you know. 
through my through my toddler or youth. Um, I seen them in and out, in and out, in and out. But there was never a connection, a relationship. There was never a bond. My father, he didn't he, he didn't teach me how, how to be a man. And, and, and I'm not going to say he didn't try because it was times that he would try. But I believe something else was calling him. Something else was pulling him away from his responsibilities as a father yeah. and as a man. Because we know that we can't be a man unless you are a father mm -hmm. to your children. Um, so my grandmother took me. My grandmother took me. Uh, not only me, but my, grandma, my grandmother was raised in uh, second and third generations in, in, in one house. I had my aunties there. You know, I had my uncles there. My little cousins uh, were there. My big cousins were there. So, you know, we was all at Big Ma house. Mm. And she had minimal resources. She really didn't have much for us. She really couldn't take care of me like she, like she wanted to, and I know she did. Yeah. And I know she wished she had more for me. You know, but we may do with what we have. You know, I would work hard. I would rake leaves. I would walk back and forth from the grocery store, from mm -hmm. the laundry mat, carrying bags of groceries or buggies of laundry. Uh, and my mother, she, I mean, my grandmother, she's from New York. Mm -hmm. She's from New York, so um, it really is, is it's not strange to, you know, transport on foot uh, buggies of clothes on wheels. You know what I'm saying? And going, in, in to, a, going to going to wash them. Going to wash them to the washer at the laundry mat. So and the laundry mat was right up the street. So um yeah, we would have to do that. I, I remember catching a city bus uh in the mornings and not coming home to about six in the evening. We going uh to do shopping, going to do this and do that. You know, my grandmother she kept me close to her. She kept me by her hip. And uh that's 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 all I remember who who was really just there consistently taking care of me. So I basically mean, that was like that during that time it was Early on, you did have that portion of stability in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? At, at, least, at least have, like you said, a consistent person being there, like your mm -hmm. grandmother. My grandmother was there. She mm -hmm. was there. Um, and needless to say, uh, she, she really couldn't teach me all there was to know about life, mm -hmm. all there was to know about the streets. But she did teach me to be tough, Yeah. no matter what I did, yeah. to be tough. And she would always tell me, baby, when you get older, make something of yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, don't run around here, you know, uh, sacrificing your life, sacrificing your freedom over meaningless things. Make something of yourself, yeah. you know? And, and I tried my best coming up to live up to her standards, okay. to live up to what she wanted for me in my life. Um, but as I start seeing the, the younger kids that were my age, man, having things, nice clothes, nice shoes, um, they would go places, have fun, you know, I... I couldn't do those things, mm -hmm. you know. My grandmother didn't have a car. We didn't have transportation, yeah. you know. So it was certain things I couldn't do, certain things I couldn't have. When I, what, what I see the other kids have, I, and I wanted it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was picked at. You know, I was laughed at. You know, because I would, I would probably wear the same jeans at least two or three days a week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We would switch. I would switch off. You know what yeah. I mean? Or I would have to get hand me down from my big cousins, and things like that coming up. Yeah, and it's, that's that's not. That's not even uncommon today, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of kids out there right now that that don't have um, what the other kids have, Definitely. and they get picked on the same way. Definitely. You know. Um, so so let's 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 fast forward just a little bit to uh, to this place where you you started getting into the craziness of the streets. Mm. Well, I would have to say. Uh... How old were you when you really started finding yourself? Uh, how old were you that you can remember when you started getting into the craziness of life? I, I say I was 13, 13 mm. years old. That's when I, I probably started smoking, um, smoking cigarettes. Around 15, I started smoking weed, you know. Um, and back then, you know, uh, I, w I, would, I would listen to, listen to this hip-hop. Hip-hop was always there. Hip hop was always there. I would probably uh, have Tupac in my ear, or Jay Z, or Jada Kiss, or Nas in my ear, and I would always remember. I would always remember whenever I was at a, a depressed moment or a state of frustration. I would put that music on, mm -hmm. and I would let it play. I would let it play. Why? Because I related to those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I related to the music that they spit. You know, to me it was dope lyrics, mm -hmm. and I liked the way they put them together. The, the delivery, the metaphors, how they, how they use their punchlines. And they, and they just brought the music to life, so music was a huge part. But then again, when I would listen to Pac, <laughs> mm. you know, I was thugged out. Okay, yeah. so now I'm toting pistols. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm hitting the streets. Yeah. And now I'm the littlest thing walking, but as long as I got that pistol, I'm like six feet tall. So basically what you're telling me is that, and I know a lot of us, uh, I mean, even today, just like it was back then, is that that, that musical influence, Definitely. the things that they say, uh, it is so easy for a, a young, undeveloped, unfocused mind mm. to be pushed into a direction Mm. just simply by putting those headphones on. Wow. Wow, you said a lot right there. Yeah. Even the word says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. For the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to a point to where if all you're exposing this child to is negative lyrics, mm -hmm. then subconsciously it's mm -hmm. going to play. It's going to play. Even when they're not listening to it, it's going to play. It's going to play. Have you ever found yourself not even liking the song, not caring about the song? But you know the words. But you know the words. Yeah. And, you, and you might even, when it come on, you might even nod your head to it a little bit, that you're subconscious. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, we all are musical beings, I believe. You know, every, every, everybody has, has a part of them that, that loves music, mm -hmm. that, that likes music. Or music is, 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 is a, a form of meditation or a, a form of s sensation soothing. You know, so a lot of times when these kids get these lyrics in their head and then everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. It's like a trend. You know, everybody's, okay, we popping pills, okay, we busting guns, you know, okay, we selling dope, mm -hmm. you know? And then, and then we use that as an excuse, well, my daddy wasn't there, you know, mm -hmm. we had it rough. You know, my, my mom, she really couldn't take care of us. We, it, was, it was seven of us in the same house, in a two-bedroom house. So, 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 you know, we gotta sleep head to feet, head to feet in the same bed, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I got out there and hustled. That's why I hit the block. They didn't want to hire me. I filled out applications. Mm -hmm. You know, they would look at me uh, up and down and judge me automatically as soon as I stepped off in the building. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew that was a no-go, you know? And I, and, I, and I seen my big homies around me. They, they, they coming up. They coming up uh, off selling dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they don't tell you about the jail cells. They don't tell you about people get people ODing and dying off these drugs that you're selling. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they don't tell you about mothers leaving their children, relapsing after relapsing after relapsing. She's trying to get it right, but she just can't because she's battling something that's bigger than her. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you about that. Mm -hmm. But those are the things that we experience coming from the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. But they glorifying it. Yeah. Hey, we out here flipping these bricks. Yeah, we, yeah, we selling this dope, man. We, yeah, we got these cars with big rims mm -hmm. on them. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's nice. It's high for you to want nice things. That's cool. But do you got to kill your people to get it? Yeah, and I think about that too because the way I look at it is there's 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 always that guy who killing it in the hood, right? There's always that one guy who you know you know Big Earl, you know Ray Ray, you know yeah, what I'm saying? No they got doubt. that one guy, but but two years ago it was somebody else. Mm -hmm. Four years ago it was somebody else. Mm -hmm. Six years ago with somebody else. Mm. So basically, every two years, the the, the 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 baton is handed to the next one, while this one go down and do 20, 30 years. Come on, you know. Yeah. And so it's never something consistent or constant. The mm. only thing that is consistent and constant is the horribleness that goes along tragedy. with the life, the tragedy. Absolutely. Yeah. All these crazy things that happen right. to an individual. But 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 even even in that. <laughs> Come on. It's hope. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm. Even in that, it's hope. Mm. And the hope ain't found in the drugs or the cars or Not the job all. or the education. Not at all. The hope is found in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And what ends up happening is, like with your story, mm -hmm. with my story, we had to we had to come to that place where did nothing else work but God. Mm. Or nothing else we thought That's right. worked but mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. We had to get to that place where God said, okay, now you can hear me. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. by that time, you beat up, you bruise, mm -hmm. you, 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 your life is in shambles, you know, and it's, it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By that time, it's crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, we get to a point to where we realize it. And, 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 and people say the, the drugs are addictive, uh, that lifestyle is addictive. But the money is addictive, mm -hmm. you know. You got these boys out here hustling, man, and, and, and they got enough money to get out the game. They got mm -hmm. enough money to invest in a small business. They got enough money to, to live off of for a while until they, until they really get on their feet, get them a nice job or a career, something mm -hmm. that, they, that they can enjoy. But the money comes so frequently and so easy, yeah. you know, and they, and they get addicted to the money. They get addicted to the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now, it, now I'm not hustling. I'm not hustling to eat now. I'm not hustling to survive now. I'm, 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 I'm hustling because it got me. Yeah. I'm hustling because it got me. Yeah. And I can't shake it. Yeah. You know, it, it's a trap. It's a trap regardless. I don't care if you're selling it or you're doing it. 
it's a trap because in the end there's death mm -hmm. in the end there's death yeah. You know, whether, whether you're, you're dead physically or you're dead spiritually, and you're cut off from the, any acknowledgement of God. Mm. Some, yeah. some, some of the OGs I, I, I speak to, I talk to, or I come across, man, they don't want to hear God. Mm -mm. They don't want to hear that. You no, know what I'm saying? Don't. But I got a better chance at coming to them, though, because they seen where I was. Yeah. They seen me out there three or four days with the same clothes on, mm -hmm. no sleep, yeah. no sleep. They seen me when I came and cop a cop little $5 piece because I ain't had the money. Mm -hmm. And they would throw me a little extra here yeah, and there. You know what, what you I'm mean. saying? I know exactly. They, 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 they seen that. So now when they see God in my life, mm -hmm. they got to know. They got to know that it ain't nothing that I did. And it, it, it boiled right down to, I mean, going into this next song is perfect. You know, uh, mm. Steve Dalton and the Leviticus singers are going to be singing this next song. We're going to come right back with Al. But this next song is called Never Lose. Right where you are on tonight, we've come to encourage you that no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, you will never lose. There's strength in Jesus. There's power in Jesus. He is our source. He is our all in all. Say it.
Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers of Charlotte. Wow. Never lose. Amazing. You can never lose. If you got Jesus, you would never lose. You're always on a winning team when you got Jesus. No matter how rough it look or how rough it may feel, you're always on a winning team. And we encourage you, like we said, to call us at uh, 864-244-1616. Uh, go online at uh, WGGSchannel16.com. Uh, prayer requests. People are waiting right now to pray with you. Uh, you can never lose. If if you have Jesus on your side, it's a it's going to be a win. I promise you that. I promise you that. Because you're looking at living proof. And you're also looking at living proof with my friend, Mr. Al Harris. So, Al, let me ask you a question. Um, yes, well, I'm going to start off with a statement. Uh, your mom and my mama know each other. Yeah. Real good, don't they? Real good. Yeah, real good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood, but just in different areas. I mean, especially like in Lake Shore when we were in Lake Shore. Uh -huh. But that was like, you know, kind of like back then when you lived in Lake Shore was basically uh, uh, the project. So yeah. everybody was, you know, subsidizing everything. Uh, uh -huh. You know, everybody was getting, you know, food stamps and, and welfare Definitely. checks and things like that right there. But, you know, but everybody in the community knew everybody, too. Uh -huh. But it was still a lot of crazy stuff going on too. You know, I remember the fights at the basketball court and on yeah. the and you know, all these crazy things happening on the yeah. bus. Um, but but I wanted to I wanted to bring that up because um, I remember, and I want you to talk about this. But I'm gonna start it off. I remember talking to my mama one night, and this was you know, um, you you could let us know how long ago it was, and she told me she said, "Have you heard about Sybil?" That's your mom. It's your mom's name. So you ever heard about Sib? I said, No, ma'am, I haven't. And um, uh, so tell us, tell us about that. <clears throat> it was 2006. Um, I had got locked up, so I was in the county. I was in the county for you know um, what I was doing out there, armed robbery and, and toting pistols and stuff like that. You know. Uh, and it was ironic because I never watched the news. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was on the top bunk. I remember like yesterday. Um, I never watched the news, so I'm up there with my headphones on, probably writing a little something or something like that. And I just glanced at it. But then I looked again and I said, what, it looked like a familiar face. It looked like a familiar face. But I shook it off, you know, kept doing what I was doing. And they called my name on the intercom to report to the lieutenant's office. And I had two guards come and get me. Um, and we walked down to the lieutenant's office. She asked me questions. Uh, do I have a depression problem or uh, anxiety or any anger issues? And I'm like, nah, not at all. Why? What's going on? What's happening? And she said, your mother was shot 14 times. And she was through on the side of the road in Lawrence County, left for dead. And from there, I lost it. You know, I, 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 I lost it. I was in it. I remember being in that, in that office losing it. So much to where they had to put me in a medical housing ward. They had to take me out of population and put me in a medical housing because my mother had just been shot 14 times, you know? And I didn't know what to think of it. You know, I'm locked up. I can't get to her. But luckily, praise God, man, they, they allowed me to, to go to the Greenwood Memorial Hospital shackle. Shackle, the cuffs cut my ankles. You know, I'm, I'm walking. I'm just trying to get to her. I'm just, I, I remember like yesterday, I'm trying to get to her, trying to get to her. Cuff, cuffs cutting me up. As soon as I walked in the room, I smelled death like something had been dead for days. And I seen my mother. And when she looked at me, her eyes was going all kinds of ways. She was so doped up. They had tubes in her nose, tube running down her throat. And she steady trying to talk. Baby, I love you. I love you. And I'm like, Mama, hold on. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. And she steady trying to tell me he tried to kill me, baby. He tried to kill me. Now, my mother had been shot 14 times. And as I'm looking at her, I'm seeing in her arms, I'm seeing the bullet wounds. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the wounds, man. And, 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 and I'm losing it at the same time. And, and, and God is just, it's like he had his hands on me, assuring me that everything was okay. So all I could tell her is everything going to be all right, mama. Everything going to be all right. And shortly after that, I was bonded out. I was bonded out of the county uh, by Miss Sylvia Mills. She, she, she had been in my life, you know, for a minute, man. And, and not only that, but... She was very generous, man. She took me in. She took me in at one point where I didn't have nowhere to stay. I didn't have nowhere to stay. So I, 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 stayed, with the, I stayed with her for a while. She bonded me out. And um, I, kept, I kept up with my mom while I was out. Got a job at Publix and things like that. You know what I'm saying? But my mom, she, it, was, it was a slow process. It was a slow process with her healing. 
And um, the perpetrator actually poured bleach. He poured ble bleach in my mother's wounds after he shot her, thinking that that would kill her quicker. But actually, that just saved her life. You know, stopped the gunpowder from entering her bloodstreams. It actually saved her life. It helped her. It aided her. And I knew it wasn't nothing but the grace of God Amen. that my mother Amen. survived those 14 shots. Amen. He threw my mom out in the field, out in the field on, in, Lawrence, on, in Lawrence County, on side the highway. And my mother said she crawled with her hands and knees to the street, to the, to the highway, flagging, trying to flag cars down, trying her best. Mm -hmm. She didn't have no strength. She bleeding, bleeding to death. She said the third car stopped for her and called the ambulance. And they had to airlift her. The Greenville Memorial Hospital, under, under a different name, Jane York. So the perpetrator wouldn't come and try to finish the job. Huh. It was real, and it got, it got real quick. Mm -hmm. It got real quick. But the fact that my mother survived, I had to ask God, what is it? You got something. You got something here. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What are you trying to show me? Talk to me. Speak to my spirit. That's why when people ask me to give an account, on my faith in God, yeah. I got to tell him, it's mind-blowing. You ready? Yeah. I got to let him know. Because mm -hmm. my mother shouldn't have made it that day. That's right. And had it not been for the grace of God, she wouldn't have made it that day. And also, let me add to that. Now, you know my mama now, my grandmama now. They have prayer meeting every Monday mm. and Thursday night. And they've been praying since 1947. Every Monday and Thursday night, they have prayer. I'm talking about my grandmama started this. And my grandmama is 94 years old, 93, 92, somewhere in there. And they started praying. Mm, 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 mm. I, can, I, I, can, I can believe that with everything in me. They started praying right then. And one thing I do know for a fact is that, that you, you try to act like you don't believe that prayer works and mm. changes things. Mm, 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 mm. If, you can, if you can get in touch with God, or if you can get in touch with somebody who can get in touch with God, Come on. it'll change things. Mm, mm, so, mm, mm. So, so, so let's, I mean, I... <laughs> the prayers of a righteous avail of money. Exactly, right? Absolutely. So, so, so here we are at this place, and your mother, she, she's healed, and God is, has, has caused her to still have her life. Definitely. So I know, I know her life is turned to the Lord and the miraculous way, right? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> she ain't never been the same. Yeah. She ain't never been the same. And, and, and she will never be the same. Mm -hmm. So know? what did that do for you? To see what God did for her? Well, look, uh, after I was released, and like I said, I got a job at Publix, man, and, and I was doing good for a minute. And um, obviously God had touched my mom's life. He's, and, 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 and at the time, I, even, even, even after my mom got shot, you know what I'm saying, I it, 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 it gave me that, that sense of, oh, man, something, something going on. You know, I've heard about God. I've, 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 I've known of God, but to experience this, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately for me, I, I guess I had a high tolerance, you know, because mm -hmm. I was still out there, mm -hmm. you know. After a while, man, yeah, working and stuff like that, it was good. But the streets kept calling me. The streets kept calling me. That's why I got a song I say, we done seen it all, cut from the same cloth, come from the same hood, we dribbled the same ball, somehow we grew apart, maybe because I changed and you got trapped in a game, the streets screaming your name and they wanting you back. You back, the block calling you back. Mm -hmm. Where you from, Tin to effect, where you at? God's son carried this world on his back and we've become so attached, I'm never letting go. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the streets were still calling me. Mm -hmm. It was still calling me because that's all I knew. Nobody came alongside me and, 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 and taught me the tools. Nobody, no, nobody read the word. Nobody gave me these, 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 these promises of God. Nobody walked me through uh, uh, the salvation's prayer. No, nobody, nobody let me know that I had a future in Christ Jesus. I know, right? Nobody told me that. So therefore now, now I, 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 have, that, I have that experience to where I've seen them work. But, but, but I, need, I need a blueprint. I need a map on this thing, y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody got to tell me. Somebody got to point me out, point me to the scriptures and let me know. But needless to say, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. So I ran back to the streets. Started back sniffing powder, you know, smoking weed and, 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 and doing the same thing, you know. And that led to robbing again, 
You know, I'm out there, gang activity, violence, you know, um, rep, repping my hood, and, and you know how they do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Fieldcrest, Nickeltown, I was, I was, I was, I was repping it. You know, I, I live by, die by. Big homies, they, you know, I'm, I'm riding out with them. You know what I'm saying? Because that was my life. And like I said, that's all I knew at that point. You know, you can, you couldn't show me nothing else and say, hey, this is reality. Hmm. No, my reality was reality. That's what I saw. And that's all, and, and that's what I was comfortable with at the time. Um, and shortly after my mom was shot, I, I can remember going to a hotel looking for a specific lady. Um, I was on drugs. And um, I met a guy, man, I used to run with, used to ride with, still with. And he said, yeah, come on, man, I'll show you where she at. I'll show you exactly where she at, come on. And I didn't know at the time that the hotel was under construction, reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So wasn't nobody staying there, but the lights was on and everything, man. I didn't know that. And these guys were out here in the front for one reason. And that's yeah. to lick anybody coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gonna get it. You know, but, but I didn't know he'd do it to me. I didn't think that he would do it to me. Mm -hmm. But when he took me up them steps and around the building, and he told me, go ahead, she right there, knock. So I'm knocking on the door, and ain't nobody coming to the door. And when I turn around and tell him, man, ain't nobody here, the pistol was in my face. Man, you know what it is, let me get it. Now, he knew my state. He knew I wasn't no big dope slinger. He knew I ain't had no money like that. He knew I was out there getting high. But he didn't care. I gave him what I had on me, which was a little or nothing. Mm -hmm. And he shot me. He shot me. And at that point, I panicked, mm -hmm. trying to get away, running, try, trying to move. But then I noticed I ain't have that much strength in my leg. And then I'm trying to run, trying to run, get away. And I'm feeling my boot get squishy, like, mm -hmm. like water in it. I get around the corner, I take my boot off, and nothing full but blood, blood, full of blood, yeah. full of blood. So I'm like, what I'm going to do? What can I do? Mm. Nobody to call on. It's dark. I can't go nowhere. And I still remember I felt hopeless. I felt hopeless. Peeked around the corner, they was gone. So I eased out, and I ran into a guy. Mm -hmm. I ran into a guy, and he helped me. Yeah. He helped my situation. Yeah. But even after that three days, I stayed in that hotel getting high, mm -hmm. bleeding in that bed, getting high, bleeding. I didn't, I, I, I didn't leave until that third day. I saw things, stuff coming out the wound that didn't look good. Yeah. So I said, yo, I, I need to go to the hospital. Yeah. I need to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I did, you know. But even after that, man, it, it, like I said, I had a high tolerance. Well, let me ask you this here. Is it a, it's a, you know, we're gonna, um, we're gonna go into this next song uh, by Steve Dalton and Leviticus of, of Charlotte. Uh, when we get back, we'll talk about what this song right here speaks about. It speaks about being grateful. So let's hear the song by Steve and, and Leviticus, Grateful.
grateful uh, Steve Dalton and the Leviticus singles of Charlotte. Uh, Al, you got so much to be grateful for, don't you? Man, I, I got so much. I don't, I don't know where to begin. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got a long list. Yeah. I thought my Christmas list was long. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, you know. T tell, tell me about, tell me about, and I know you're grateful for this, you know, and I know like we only have so much time left, but I want people to hear this, and I want to be able to talk about your uh, music also. Absolutely. Tell me how, tell me that moment when you said, okay, God, I'm through. It was February 2008. I was in uh, Columbia on Kirkland Yard, and um, I, I, I remember like yesterday, um, there was a guy who came in. He, he sung a song. He, he preached a message, and um, it, was, it wasn't one of those powerful, I don't, you know, but it was basically just letting me know that you're either going to continue going through what you're going through or you're going to accept Christ right now and gain eternal life. Not only that, but life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, when I, when I made that decision, you know, to trust God in spite of, you know, in spite of my, my faults, my failures, uh, the way I grew up, my mindset, you know what I'm saying? I know I had to change my mindset, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I needed the tools. Like I said, I needed the tools to do it, but I, was, I found myself grateful after being locked up, and, and that's ironic, you know? But I was in the penitentiary when I started preaching the Word of God, 2010. Mm. Awesome. You know? I, I, was, I was on a level three yard at Perry when I started preaching the Word of God. And, 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 and sometimes it may even come off as anger, but nah, this is passion. This is passion right here. I used to preach the word of God to, to so-called murderers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rapists. You know, the, the, these guys who had done did 10 to 15 years. Already in prison. Uh, already in the prison, yeah. yeah. And they've been here. They've been here. Little old me, I come. I'm about 22, 23 years old. No, 2010, I was, I was about 24. Mm -hmm. I was uh, about 20, I say, I would say I was about 24, 20, 20, 24. But anyway, I was preaching, preaching to these guys, man, these hard guys, and I would see tears rolling down their eyes. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I knew it wasn't me, yeah. but it was the word of God that was transforming those men. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but he was softening, softening their hearts, giving them a new mindset. Yeah. And I was grateful for the fact that God could use me mm -hmm. after all my mess and everything that I've been through. Yeah. And then he spoke to me softly. This is why you went through what you went through. Yeah. Make something of it. Yeah. Make something of it. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to you don't want to go through hell while you're living and die. And go to hell, mm -hmm. you catch hell twice. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I, wanted to, I wanted to change the mindsets, not only of others, but myself. Yeah. And that's, that's a powerful thing because um, we, you know, and I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, we talk about how, you know, your testimony, great, awesome testimony. Thank My you. testimony, great, awesome testimony. And there's, there's so many more out there just like that, how God intervened and delivered. That's right. And completely change the person. Mm -hmm. But the same God that can do that wow. is the same God that can keep a person from ever even going down those roads. That's right. You know. That's right. And so with, 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 this, with this album that you have, um, let's put that right there, see if they can get a shot of that. It's called Fit for a King. Definitely. Tell me about Fit for a King, man. Fit for a King, man. Uh, Fit for a King was inspired. It was inspired by... Um, so many people like myself um, or come from the same area I come from mm -hmm. who think they're not worthy of God's love. Yeah. You know, they don't feel worthy of God's love because of their past, because of where they come from, because of who their parents are, or because of the lack of not having, mm -hmm. you know, not having proper education, what, what, whether, whether it may be not having the love or the structure, you know. So fit for a king is for that child in the ghetto, that mm -hmm. child in the hood, man. Yeah. You know, who don't know no better, mm -hmm. who don't know no better, but they're fighting. They're fighting. There's something on the inside of them. They're lonely. They're depressed. They're frustrated. They're mm -hmm. angry. They're sad. And they don't know where it's steam from. They, don't, they, they, they can't detect where it's coming from, but they just know they, they don't want to feel like this. Mm -hmm. Whether it's not having their father in their lives, not having the finances, uh, or, 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 just, or just not, not liking life at all, period. Because I, I remember being at the state where I didn't, I didn't like life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I really didn't care. I really didn't care if I, if I lived or died. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back then, I, I really didn't. Yeah. You know, that's why my song, I say, no, I was really getting high. I was close to suicide. Mm -hmm. And I meant that. Yeah. I meant that, you know? I know, like, um, it, 
after listening to this, because I got it in my car right now in the CD player, and I was listening to it again no doubt. on the way over here. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's and, up. And the, the, actual, the actual CD itself, uh, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but it tells a story, mm -hmm. you know, itself. Because mm -hmm. when you look at the names of the songs, loneliness, never letting go, humiliated, nothing compares, priceless, you know, remains, which is one another one of my favorite because you got Reggie Rock on there. Yeah, with that's you. my man, Reggie Rock. Man, <laughs> shout out. Uh, Premeditated. How about now? And go. The list just goes on and on. And yeah. there are some powerful songs on here. I'm talking about just straight powerful songs. And mm -hmm. these songs uh, can translate into the same stuff. When we started talking earlier, you mm -hmm. said that you were listening to some pop or some Biggie or some Nas or yeah. Jay-Z and they was telling you to go pick up the gun. They was telling you to go slang the dope. If we can get these albums, like your album and the other gentlemen who I know of, like like Mercy and Reggie Rock and, and, and all the other guys, Prince Redeem, if we can get these type of CDs and albums into the kids' hands yeah. and get them listening to them, I believe that it could promote them to thinking differently. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, because I'm get, I, I get messages, I get text messages, I get inbox messages of these kids telling me, you know what, man, I don't listen to your music, I don't even cuss no more, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even look at things the same no more. Yeah. And I've had old ladies tell me, hey, I don't listen to that rap, but that, that Fit for a King, that, I, I will listen to that, I love mm -hmm. it, I play it all the time, I let my grandkids hear it, and I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome how music, the truth, that's mm -hmm. the truth. You know what I'm saying? Every, everything that I rap about is off real life experiences. I got some heavy hitters on that Fit for a King. Shout out my man Siege. Uh, shout out my man No Gray. Shout out Reggie Rock. Shout out uh, Pastor Darian Blue. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> shout out to Pastor B. Pastor Brian Ellis, man. He's great. He's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, uh, shout out my man Pat Styles. Ah, Pat Styles, man. He has an awesome voice. Um, this, this whole, this whole Sammy Dawson. This whole thing is a, is an embodiment of, of, of. of God's love, being fit for God's love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, 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 and let me not forget the song Priceless. I, I, I heard you mention the song Priceless. I cannot go any further without shouting out my wife, Collier Harris. I love her so much. Listen, when I tell you, when I, when I, when I think of me being stable and, 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 and remaining in God's love, mm -hmm. uh, being obedient to God's love, I think of my wife, man. Yeah. I think of my wife, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I got some great people that's alongside of me that encourage me, man. But 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 if anybody know Al Harris, man, I, I ain't just the type to just, you know, call somebody frequently, constantly and be like, hey man, you don't know, I ain't I ain't I ain't really just got close friends like that, man. I got I got I got mentors. I got brothers in Christ Jesus that I hold dear to me, but my wife, man, that's my best friend. I keep her beside me. I listen to her. You know, pride goes out the window because I know if I listen, God put her in my life for a reason. I've seen her growth. I've seen God work in her life so much, man. Her faith has, has, has blew through the roof, man. <laughs> and when I look at her and I, and I see God working in her life, man, I say, God, you must, I know you got something for me. That's because awesome, when, I first, when I first when I first met her, it, yeah. was, it wasn't nothing like that. Yeah, you know no, what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't. No, no, I, I didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? But... But as I see her step by step by step grow, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man. It's like they said, that, like they always say, but God, right? But God. But God. But so, God. So, so we, we, um, we are, we're probably going to get to this next song and uh, get into, uh, that song may take us out, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I just want everybody to know that, that what you're seeing before you is a grand miracle. Yeah. And what yeah. God does, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and nothing less. What, what God can do in a man's life, right. He can do. He can do in your life. He can do in the life of somebody that you will be praying for. The same God, He can. He can change your life. Um, and as we go out with this last song by Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers, this is what God does. It's called reset.
The local churches are inviting you just listen to this week's Church Spotlight. New Hope Baptist Church in Greer will have a Face of God conference Sunday, July 16th at 3 p.m., continuing the 17th through the 19th at 7 p.m. nightly. This is a free event. For more information, call 864-879-7080. This is Church Spotlight, a public service announcement of Dove Broadcasting and TV 16. Make plans now to spend your Friday and Saturday with Joyce. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to put my hope in God, and I believe that He's going to be good to me. The Joyce Meyer Conference, three unique sessions of inspiring teaching from the New York Times bestselling author that will give you a fresh understanding of how the Bible applies to your everyday life. It's like she's talking to me. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org slash conference or call 1-866-C-JOYCE. 
The local churches are inviting you. Just listen to this week's Church Spotlight. Vicki Yoey will be singing at Pritchard Park, located in downtown Asheville, 6 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, July 29th, and Harvest Time Assembly on Sunday, July 30th from 6 to 8 p.m. For more information, call 828-277-2937. Straightway Pentecostal Holiness Church in Greenville will have a fundraiser for the refurbishing of their church building on Saturday, July 29th at 3 p.m. The topic is Celebrating Jesus. More information, call 864-908-2179. Church Spotlight is a public service announcement of Dove Broadcasting and TV 16. To have your events announced, send your entries at least three weeks in advance to Church Spotlight, PO Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602. All entries are subject to availability. Welcome back to the second portion of Nightline. If you missed the if you if you missed the first portion of Nightline, you missed something real special. I'm talking about a powerful interview, a powerful testimony, powerful singing. And I was talking to Al about it earlier. It, it seemed like it seemed like the testimony went right along with the songs for some odd reason. It seemed like everything just flowed. So we know God is all in it. We, we prayed before we got started at 8 o'clock that we decrease and that the Holy Spirit increase. God, we still and always want you to have your way. Always want you to have your way. Now, once again, let's read our scripture for the evening. Take it from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 8. And it reads, At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Until this day, the praises go before the war. Until this day, if you got something going on in your life, if there's something hindering you, I promise you, if you just start praising God, regardless of what it is. I promise you, if you start lifting up your hands and shouting his name and blessing his name, that all those things will fade away. Because that's how you go into battle. That's how you go into war. Yeah. And we're looking forward to having a great evening this e uh, 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 for the rest of the, the remainder of the show. We're going to do some interviewing with Steve Dalton and some of his uh, uh, singers. Uh, his wife is here also. Um, and we are just, we're, our plan is to just have a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord this evening. And if we don't have a wonderful time in the Lord this evening, then you can have a wonderful time and help us to have a wonderful time in God. Um, I, just, I just really, really want to take some time right now and just thank God for what he's doing. Uh, especially, like I said, with, the, with Al coming on earlier just want to take some time and thank God for what he did in his life. And who knows, we may get to a point where we may even have uh, Miss Sybil to come on the show. Wouldn't that be nice to have his mom come on? Uh, so, but now, let's uh, get back to singing with Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers of Charlotte, I Win. testimony. 
and what we've gathered from the experience on tonight. That many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver. So our decree on tonight is that no matter what we face, no matter what we experience, say Jesus split. It's in him that we have the victory. Steve Dalton and the Leviticus Singers, oh my, my, my. Every song has been better than the first. I mean, it's been explosive in here this evening. I'm talking about explosive. Uh, we, had, we had somebody send in a praise report that says that they called TV16 for prayer that my daughter needed a job. They said, we praise God. She starts her new job today. Amen. Thank God. And amen. It, I'm telling you, if you don't believe prayer works, I dare you to start praying. How about that? I dare you to start praying if you don't think that prayer works. So, we have Mr. Steve Dalton. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Welcome morning. to the show. How's everybody doing? Good. Let me see if I get these names right. They got them right. Let me see if they, make sure, I'm, make sure I got my names right. There we go. Mr. Steve Dalton and his wife, Lisa. 
-hmm. And who is Keela and who is Kendra? Keela. Keela and Kendra. So Kendra. they got in order. Y'all sat in order then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me keep that right there so I can get everybody in order, man. So welcome to the show, man. How y'all doing? Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Y'all sound so good. To God be the glory. Oh my goodness. You sound like 30 people over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you get how you get 30 people's voices out of four people? Only him. Amen, amen, yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, we're glad that you guys are here, man. So tell, tell me, how did the ministry begin? Sure. Um, we actually began um, as a community choir mm -hmm. um, back in uh, 2002, mm -hmm. about 13, 14 years later. I kind of forget. <laughs> and uh, now we're here. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you have this, this tremendous name. Uh, we've been reading yeah, that verse of scripture all evening, Deuteronomy yes. 10, 8. Yes. And Levi, Leviticus. Yes. How, how, did, how did that name come about? And tell me what does that mean sure. to y'all? Um, for me, um, you know, when it comes to choosing names, when you have ministries, you know, people like to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm a man of the word, and I try to, you know, do my best to definitely uh, keep things aligned with scripture. So, uh, of course, uh, with Leviticus being the first mention of uh, the Levites, mm -hmm. um, which maintained the temple, not only did they maintain the temple, but they were the actual praise and worship leaders, yeah. uh, the, the, the minstrels per se. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to have something um, that wasn't just catchy, but had a uh, pure meaning yeah. uh, in regards to scripture and, and his word. So that's, okay. that's how I came about. So Lisa, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, what would you say that you guys' this musical styling is? Um, what type, what style of music would you say you guys sing? We are worship leaders. Worship leaders? Um, not so um, church worship leaders. Mm -hmm. you know, but we have a wide variety of, mm -hmm. of songs that we reach to everyone. Yeah. You know? But we are, worship is the heart of Leviticus Singers of Church. Yeah. I, I remember the fact that it's kind of hard to listen, not to listen to your music and and not start doing this. You know what I mean? It's, it make you start doing this right here when you listen to it. Even the, even the slow songs make you listen. <laughs> That's yeah. the geniusness of uh, Stephen. And, it's, it's just and these awesome. wonderful singers right, right here, right here, right here. It is an awesome display of not only not only talent, but God's goodness. Yes. You God. understand what I'm saying? Amen. Because the way I see it, it, it comes across your musical style and comes across so pure and so open. Mm. Yes. You know, anybody can listen to it and hear what the message is. Yes. You yes. know, and then there's great music to go with it, but then the message in it is phenomenal. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And all these are all these are you guys' songs? Yes, uh, all okay. these songs that we've uh, actually ministered tonight. Um, they are our original songs and um, a whole lot more to come. And then uh, yeah, we mentioned, uh, I didn't mention this, but shout out to the live band on tonight. I got my yeah. boys with yeah. me on tonight. So uh, <laughs> glad to have them. So uh, that's, that's the other part of the masterpiece. <laughs> so this is the first time the live band been here? Yes, yes, and we've been here like four times. So this is the first time the live band has been here. And I'm glad that I was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I was here. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's, go to, let's go down the line and everybody t tell me, uh, how long, well, let's start, let's start with you, Keela. How long have you been with this group? That long, seven, long. eight years, seven, seven or eight years, years. yeah. yeah. Okay. She actually introduced me to them. Okay. Her and I became best friends the first day I met her. Uh -huh. And um, she was telling me about the gospel book that she sings. In, mm -hmm. And I was like, I've been looking for one. <laughs> and, and so he, she called him, and he was like, yeah, just bring her by. And the day that I came by and we all sat and talked, it was just... Um, a feeling of home mm -hmm. and completeness, you yeah. know, and we have been through mm -hmm. good, bad, mm -hmm. ugly, yeah. beautiful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, it all, we all still remain beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. You know, thank God yeah. that it just doesn't show on us. We are loving people and I love them. I would be with them eight more years. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What, what about you, Ken? Um, how long have you been? Two months to four. Two months to four. Two months to four. Two months to four. So, yeah. Um, mm. I was actually looking for uh, just different singing opportunities, period. Mm -hmm. And I saw a post online for gospel singers and came to the house, met Steve and Lisa, auditioned, and seven, eight years later, here we are. Yeah. So, 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 so Steve, <laughs> actually, it's a difference between somebody who can sing that's about who can sign. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got some folks with you that can sign. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. no, I know a lot of singers. You're true. I'm true. a singer. Gotcha. But mm -hmm. you guys are singers. Yes, ah. see, 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 me and you in the same boat. Me and you in the same boat. Singers. <laughs> Singer. <laughs> That's yeah, what's up. I know, right? That's what's up. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know I hold a tune. <laughs> right. You know, right. Maybe write a sentence or two. Right, but, right, right. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. But that's what you do, you know. God, God places places folks in our lives that yes. that help bring out the best in us. Mm -hmm. 
you yes, know. Yes. I mean, you're blessed with a beautiful wife yes. and a beautiful group and yes. and the musicians. So it's it's tremendous things ahead for you guys. I believe it with everything in me. Amen. Um, Amen. So let me let me ask you this, uh, Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever faced any uh, any challenges internally with the music? Sure, sure. Yeah, you want to explain? Um, <clears throat> not per se, quote unquote, with the uh, music, mm -hmm. but um, you know, but just as a ministry, as as Kilo, as Kilo was mentioning. Um, at the end of the day, any real family, um, the love of a family will be tested. Mm -hmm. You know, just like we are with our natural blood yeah. relatives, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but at the end of the day, um, because God so loved the world that he gave, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, every time that we, you know, come into a situation, you know, it's always the coming back mm -hmm. and to giving what it is, giving it back to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. So um, there isn't any challenge too hard. Um, you know, that has been thrown at us, um, that has, uh, you know, pulled us, pulled us apart. Okay. I mean, you know, God is the greatest power. Mm -hmm. So yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we rely on, we rely on his love. We kiss, we hug, uh, we slap five, <laughs> and we keep it moving. <laughs> so, yeah. slap. Well, there's, there's a, you know, there's a, in Proverbs, I believe it is, it says that iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You know, and I think the thing that we forget about iron sharpening iron is that when you take two pieces of metal mm -hmm. and you rub them together, mm -hmm. they get hot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You understand what I'm That's saying? Good. And mm -hmm. it is that heat yeah. that makes the makes the iron sharp. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You, know, yes. Yes. you know, and so exactly. so if, if there if there's never any heat going mm -hmm. on, because yeah. see that that, that 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 friction causes you to mm -hmm. get past the friction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And be stronger. Yes. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And then when you get some more friction, you get past it because you remember how you dealt with the other friction beforehand. Right. That's good. You know, and so, uh, you know, a friend is somebody who sits closer than a brother. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and I, have, I have some friends that uh, are closer than, you know, some of my family. Talk about you it. You know, but they've, they've been my friends and they've been sure. there. And, sure. and you, know, not, you know, not to knock family because it, it makes them family anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, have you... Have, What's the key? What's the key to remaining together? Mm -hmm. um, God first. Mm -hmm. Always God first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no matter. I mean, at the end of the day, um, and we don't. It's not just the singing with us. Um, we we come together. We study scripture. Mm -hmm. um, they come over to the house. They go in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we drive cars. And we, <laughs> I mean, so mm -hmm. this is a real family. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we've been. We know each other's each other stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of yes. the day, real, and um, and at the end of the day, so I think the love of God. And then, of course, uh, you know, understanding uh, the focal point of what we're together to do, mm -hmm. which is to bring him glory. Mm -hmm. um, and we are recording artists, so, I, you know, I definitely mm -hmm. I respect um, their professionalism mm -hmm. um, as great singers. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we come, when they come all together, it, again, it just goes back to the love of God and the discipline to be together. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have discipline in what you're in, then it's already defeated. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, I know, it's, I, know it's a, I know it's a family affair because I know we were talking earlier, and, <clears throat> you know, you said that when you leave here, you got to drive back and take somebody to work. Yes, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, people people taking, they, they, they arrange their lives sacrifice. so yes. that they can sacrifice because yes. you don't live, uh, you know, 20 minutes away. Right. No. Yeah, you guys live a pretty good distance. Yes. I mean, hence the name Singers of Charlotte. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 so, 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 um, uh, Lisa, tell me, what is the message of the Leviticus singers of Charlotte, what is your what is your what is your message your your mission statement? You know, what is what is it? Our mission statement is to spread the word of God through music mm -hmm. to reach the soul of the lost. Mm -hmm. That's our message. Yeah, are you feel like y'all doing that? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah. 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 absolutely. I believe when people see us worshiping mm -hmm. while ministering, mm -hmm. it touches their heart. You know, it's not just a performance for us. Mm -hmm. you know, we do this for real. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You know, we find ourselves, you know, obviously for me, in tears. You know, at, even after we finish singing the last song, you know, we kind of like, Mm. Okay. Gotta bring it down. Okay, <laughs> we're not at church. Get the tears together, yeah. pull yeah. yourself in, because you know we sing from the soul, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. from our spirit, and and that's the message we want the people to see. Yeah. You know, this is not performance for us. Yeah, that's good, cause you know when you're at church, you can 
you can he can you can saunter around mm, to the band and tell them to bring it down a little bit. Uh -huh. Then you can you can really minister then, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's 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 the awesome thing about being in that position of of ministering in that fashion. Sure. Yes. You know, God gives us all gifts. He, yes. he tell he gives us all something. And to be able to do what you guys do at the level of what you're doing it. It lets me know that it's just the beginning for you guys. It is. I'm looking forward to everything that God got for you. I'm even looking forward to seeing you guys on Relentless Faith. Come on. Relentless Faith. Come on. Okay. <laughs> 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 Exactly. Yeah, you've been down here four times, so you might as well come on back down again. Yeah, well, hey, you got to. You got to. <laughs> so, so um, your album. Yes. Tell me about that. Sure. Um, we released a, a, a EP um, a year ago uh -huh. um, entitled uh, I Win the Remix. And um, actually, we just sung uh, the song on tonight and mm -hmm. different variations of the song. But at the end of the day, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. So our message is that people will understand walk see victory yeah you're going to be challenged mm -hmm. yeah you're going to be tried but at the end of the day you have to believe that god has his hands on you Amen. so i win that's what it's about Amen. yeah yeah and it's yeah. based on a true story all of our lives not just mm -hmm. the church person the everyday person mm -hmm. and if they don't know them that's our calling card to say this is how we've gotten where we've gotten mm -hmm. not on our own but by the only one wise and true god yes. 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 yeah that's Amen. awesome and, and you know you always hear people say you know, at the end of the story, we win. Mm -hmm. But it's so true. It's, it's so true. true. It's, you know, so it is. true. It's, it's not a cliche. And, and the mm -hmm. thing is, though, I, I win before the end of the story. Come on, yeah, come come on, on now. You come on. on. <laughs> you know, just keep walking. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm going to win or not. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. man, the word of God tells me, said that now mm -hmm. I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. 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 Not right now I am. Right now. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, that these, they're, the, the other song that you guys saw tonight that I thought was really, really just an outstanding song, the song Reset, mm -hmm. you know, because we were talking with Al earlier, and that's what God does. Tell me, can, can somebody tell me about that song, sure. Reset? Um, ironically, um, we were uh, invited to lead worship um, at a major conference a couple months ago. And the title of the conference uh, was Reset. Uh -huh. And uh, so in my meditation time, um, you know, I'm not one of those guys that just kind of sit down and just start writing. I always have something constantly going, mm -hmm. always, you know, recording something, voicing something. And the Lord just dropped it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord just dropped it in my spirit. And um, so it, it began as like a little chant. Mm -hmm. And so from a chant, became a song. what we have on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's awesome because I know I remember when God reset my life. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? I, I know you remember when he reset your life yeah. and so on and so on. <laughs> it's like it was like I mean like the word literally says being born again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus yes. came to Nicodemus and said, "You're a great teacher. Mm -hmm. Where do you come from?" And Jesus didn't even answer. He said, "Man, want to get in heaven? He got to be born again." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even yes. get into that conversation right. with him. Exactly. He got to be reset. Yes. Reset. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. Exactly. So, reset. so how how um how can a person contact you guys? Sure. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you just look up Leviticus Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can find us on Twitter, uh, LSO Charlotte. You can just Google our name, and mm -hmm. all the information will come up, mm -hmm. phone numbers, everything you need, music on iTunes or anywhere uh, digital media or music is downloadable. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, my last question I think I have for you guys is, uh, so what's next? Wow. I mean, what can we say? Uh, we travel a whole lot. A whole lot. Uh, we move around a whole lot. Um, we're just going to remain faithful to God mm -hmm. and just see. We have great expectations, but we know that many are the plans of a man's heart, but his plans are the major plans. Mm -hmm. So we're going to remain focused and see what he has to say. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. All right. I guess, um, I guess we have another song, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have another song, so we're going to go ahead and um, <coughs> get you guys up there okay. and, and have fun yes. with this next song. I know it's going to be a great one, um, and we're so glad to have them here this evening. So glad to see what God is doing in their lives. And I tell you, you keep your, keep your eyes open for Steve Dalton and the Leviticus of Charlotte. You keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open, because what they are going to be doing in the future, I promise you, uh, it's going to shake the kingdom up. Um, so now we have Steve Dalton, Leviticus Singers, singing the anthem. Give us a, a 
second song of the communion song of the night. The song simply says, Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. And here's the part that we like. Death cannot hold you down. You are the risen king, seated in majesty. You are the risen king. So right where you're on tonight, just lift your hands in worship. Hallelujah. Sing, Kendra.
The local churches are inviting you just listen to this week's Church Spotlight. New Hope Baptist Church in Greer will have a Face of God conference Sunday, July 16th at 3 p.m., continuing the 17th to the 19th at 7 p.m. nightly. This is a free event. For more information, call 864-879-7080. This is Church Spotlight, a public service announcement of Dove Broadcasting and TV 16. Make plans now to spend your Friday and Saturday with Joyce. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to put my hope in God, and I believe that He's going to be good to me. The Joyce Meyer Conference, three unique sessions of inspiring teaching from the New York Times bestselling author that will give you a fresh understanding of how the Bible applies to your everyday life. It's like she's talking to me. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org conference or call 1-866-C-JOYCE. Today, an amazing special guest on Fixing the Money Thing. Our purpose is to make leaders, creators, and entrepreneurs better by simply helping them understand how to live brilliantly, lead differently, and grow profitably. Simon T. Bailey is a leadership imagineer who teaches people around the world how to build a bridge from their current reality to their brilliant future. It's not about communicating want, want, want. It's about connection. More brilliant insights into living a world-changing life. Simon T. Bailey, again on Fixing the Money.